It's now been two years since we started here at Pedalbox. And in the last 12 months, we added another car to the fleet. And now you can buy some Pedalbox merch, like these t-shirts and these caps. Some of you have asked a few times if there's any way you can support us. And now at pedalbox.show, you can. These t-shirts are available in most sizes, in black and grey. We're going to have some more designs for you soon, as well as these caps in curve brim and snapback. And soon, hopefully, we'll have some beanies as well, as it's starting to get chilly. Winter is coming, after Winter all. Winter is coming. Now, besides the merch, which is going to be a growing range over time as we add more designs, we've also got a rundown of all of our current car projects, and also we're going to keep the front page up to date all the time with the latest episode for you. And we finally got round to setting up a Patreon. Again, a couple of people have asked us if there's any way they can help keep us in welding gas and bits of metal that we can weld onto the chassis, so now you can. Unfortunately, it's been a couple of bad months around here. We haven't had a lot of luck with weather and parts availabilities. It's been pretty thin on the ground for content for you guys. Yeah, it's, this is about our third attempt at filming this without being interrupted by rain, and we're actually shooting this in the middle of bursts of fireworks. So to try and get something out the door for you guys, because we are still struggling, we're going to give you a bit of a recap on where we've gone through the last two years and what's coming up soon. So you might remember when we bought this chassis and then we cut an enormous amount off it across the next maybe six months or so. This pile of metal represents everything that we cut off just to leave us with what we've used in the chassis. Now, there is still quite a lot of chassis left. So it's basically the centre section. First to go was the rear end, which had nowhere near enough room to fit the engine and drive line we were looking at. So that all came off. We built up a whole new rear chassis to fit the engine and transmission to. And then we spent five months building the rear suspension, which we probably shouldn't have done. We should have made it a lot more simple, as we ended up doing after we built the front suspension, sat the car on the ground and realised our rear suspension didn't actually work. So we went back to the drawing board and modified our upper arms. We got rid of one of them completely, relocated the other, and it looks like everything worked correctly. So after about 12 months, we had the front and rear suspension sorted, the suspension in, and we could finally put the car on the ground. After that, we fit the steering rack, steering column, seats which meant replacing the entire floor of the car and started filling out a few other bits and pieces ending most recently with the front and rear bumpers but before we can put the rear bumper on we need to figure out how the exhaust fits and the exhaust is a bit of an open question because actually we've got a new engine going in first bam that's right it's been two years it's not turned a wheel and we're already changing the engine although it's actually still going to be a 1.8t now we've got a bam our friend Sean has kindly donated his Audi TT and we're going to be fitting that engine in an upcoming episode. We have pulled it out of the car and started playing around and we just need to check a few fitments and then we can actually get it in and done and move on yet again with the exhaust. Now moving on to our other cars, the SD1, which a few people have been asking about because that's been quite quiet lately. Uh, that's actually spent the last four months in a body shop and it's probably going to spend quite a few more. Uh, it turns out that there was a couple of spots of rust behind the rear wheel arches you can't buy those as patch panels. You've got to buy a whole rear three quarter. So more or less the whole back of the car is getting cut off and replaced. So happy days. So we're not expecting to see that again for a while. But yeah. when it does come back, it'll be mint. It'll be good for another 40 years. It'll be better than it came out of the factory, I think. And then there's a load of new parts you're going to put on it, including what the water pump upgrades, brake upgrades, and then more power. Yeah, the plan is cooling, then brakes. And then at that point, it can support boost. And in the same vein of old cars that need rust repairing, the Thunderbird bonnet was taken down to a really good workshop in Aldershot called Car Savers, where Martin put a new patch panel in the front lip of the front of the bonnet. It's really, really awkward to try and fix, so we just shipped it off because we haven't had the weather and we don't really have the space to put a panel that big indoors and weld it. So that went away, that's now back. The top has all been sanded down and primed back and it's almost finished and we can start moving on to other bits again because the brakes still aren't done and I really really wanted that done this summer. Finally the Golf is a bit of a sad story. We took it for an MOT and it died presenting all of the hallmarks of a crank position sensor failure which we dutifully swapped out, installed an OBD2 port and then read that everything was working. We put the whole lot back together, the seats, the dashboard, everything, got ready to take it for another MOT and it died again. And that is really, really frustrating because I haven't driven that car in three years. Chris, I don't think, has ever seen it run other than the time we took it to the MOT station and he drove it and the tracking was so bad. It was just a death trap. Oh, it was sketchy as hell, Instantly yeah. needed doing after the MOT, which of course it failed. So that's still ongoing. 
And that pretty much wraps up our last two years of work here. We've got four projects on the go. We've dismantled two cars and we've shipped 32 episodes for you guys. Yeah, it's been a pretty productive time, all told. It'd probably been easier if we didn't have other cars to work on to get more done on the chassis, but eh, it is what it is. So thanks very much for watching. We're sorry this is a little bit of a filler episode, but we will be back with you with more content as soon as the weather and the light lets us. We're probably going to throw these lights under a big tent and get some more work done across the winter to try and keep up with that. Hit the subscribe button if you like what we're doing and you want to be kept up to date with more information on it and you want to know when the next episodes come out, press the little bell thing as well. That would be brilliant. Thanks for watching. And remember to check out the website, buy some merch, back us on Patreon because we really need the money because this metal's starting to get expensive. <laughs>